and welcome back to the Back to Space News Flash. Guys, we are officially in the big swing of the holidays, so I hope you guys are having a great time. Amazon Prime is probably killing it because it looks like Santa has come every day here. Anyways, let's start. Let's start out with a heartwarming story that combines space, kids, and art. What could be better? Guys, Blue Origin successfully launched their new Shepard rocket on December 11th, and there are a couple of really cool things about this flight. Okay, first of all, this launch marked the 100th commercial payload mission for the company, as well as the 12th time they launched a new Shepard rocket and the sixth launch of that specific booster. That's cool. But what's even cooler is that it carried more than a thousand postcards and art projects from students on Earth into space. So, random, but uh, OK Go, my favorite band in middle school, hosted an art in space contest, and they asked middle school and high school students to come up with innovative art projects. And the two winners of this contest, their projects were on board. The postcards are from kids a part of the Blue Origins nonprofit club for the future. These kids wrote postcards about what they think the humankind future in space could and should look like. My heart. It's so cute. Okay, moving on. The Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, the PSLV, launched on December 11th from the Sadish Dawan on India's east coast. This particular launch is important because this flight marks the 50th flight for this little thing. The main payload, a spy satellite, shh, called R-I-S-A-T-2-B-R-1, successfully separated the rockets and deployed its solar array. This little spy is expected to operate for five whole years. The PSLV also deployed another nine commercial satellites into their intended orbits. The satellites were from Israel, Italy, Japan, and the US. And it flew under a commercial agreement with New Space India Limited. Some of the other more famous passengers aboard the PSLV include Chandrayaan-1, which flew to the moon in 2008 and discovered ice water on the surface, and the Mars Orbiter mission, which landed on the good old red Mars surface in 2013. Anywho, we'll see what the spy satellite is up to. Or will we? In the past episodes, I've been talking about the debacle between SpaceX Starlink program and the resistance from the astronomers and the weather satellite programs. The biggest concern is that the brightness of the satellites will affect their ability to get a clear view of space. It could also interfere with radio wavelengths used during the course of space exploration. So Elon recently heard everyone out and he was like, guys, I see your point. I totally understand where you're coming from or something along those lines. So now the company just revealed that one of the 60 satellites slated for deployment before the end of this year will have a special coating on it designed to make it less reflective when the sun rays hit it. The quote is, we'll do a trial and error to figure out the best way to get this done. Gwen Shotwell, the company's president and chief operating officer said in comments reported by Space News, adding that SpaceX needs to be sure that the coding doesn't adversely affect the satellite's performance. SpaceX is aiming to launch batches of 60 satellites every two to three weeks over the next 12 months a rate that should create enough coverage to provide global broadband by the middle of 2020. Guys, it's December of 2019, that is very soon. So far, the company has launched two batches, one in May 2019 and the other in November 2019. So, we will see. In a video NASA released this past Monday, um, it's of the SLS blowing up the rocket propellant tank. Why would anyone do that? Because they wanted to see how much the tank could hold. And you know what? It could deal with a lot more than, than what was expected. You guys need to believe in it. <laughs> so basically, NASA Marshall Space Flight Center engineers pushed the test tank full of liquid hydrogen, way past the limit. Uh, the tank was standing more than 260% of the expected flight loads for over five hours, at which point engineers spotted a buckling point. And then a burst. Not only did the tank prove that it could withstand some serious pressure, it performed in line with what was predicted by a Boeing analyst team. The initial tank buckling failure occurred at the same relative location as predicted by the Boeing analysis team and initiated with 3% of the predicted failure load. Luke Denny, who is a qualified test manager for Boeing Test and Evaluation Group, said in a statement. He continued to say, the accuracy of these predictions against real life testing validates our structural models and provides high confidence in the tank design. Guess what guys, they're confident. Moving on. Remember last week when we talked about the mice and the gear and the beer? 
Well, they arrived at the ISS. And that's it for the story. I just wanted y'all to know. You know, I've been going to a lot of holiday parties and not any of them have beer, gear, and mice. I need to get on that train. The past. On December 15th, 1965, Gemini 6A was launched. Gemini was, of course, the crewed NASA spaceflight program. This particular mission crewed by Wally Shira and Tom Stafford. Gemini 6A was the fifth crewed Gemini flight and the 13th crewed American flight and the 21st crewed spacecraft of all time. In this mission, they achieved the first crew rendezvous with another spacecraft, its sister Gemini 7. And at the time, we were behind in the space race. Of course, after the success of Gemini, we then moved on to the Apollo program and we beat the Russians to the moon. Yay, USA. Okay, guys, it's time to do the giveaway. <laughs> this week's giveaway is a signed poster and an original from Esteban Guzman. And it's also his birthday, so happy birthday. All right, let's see who the winner is. Uh, oh, Ashley Thiel. You won the poster, congratulations. This week we are giving away a mission patch by the one and the only Tim Gagnon. If you do not know anything about this guy, man, he is amazing. He makes um, original patches and they are fantastic and he was kind enough to offer one of his patches to you guys. This original patch is actually worn on the back of Charlie Duke's jacket. So anyways, he was kind enough to do this. So if you want to win this, you have to do three things like every other video we've ever made. Same rules. One, subscribe to this channel so you can see me every Monday morning. Two, like this video because it's awesome, right? And three, leave a comment, preferably nice. Do it. And if you look down at the show more, you'll see our WeFunder campaign is now live. This means that you can now become an equity owner of Back to Space and get cool stuff like this exclusive shirt that we are only giving away to our investors. Moving on. The future. Guys, the Europe Space Agency, the ESA, is launching a suicide robot to quote, hug space trash out of orbit. I'm sorry, say what? This reminds me of Iron Giant, which is an amazing movie. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the deal. The space around our planet, up to 1200 miles in altitude, more than 3 thousand defunct satellites and tens of millions of smaller pieces of debris clatter around in the atmosphere. Oh, and a small little detail, each is moving tens of thousands of miles per hour. Um, that's not good. In some cases, two big pieces of space trash will slam into each other and then they will create more trash. And this could cause damages to satellites and spacecrafts. So here we go. Clear Space One, ESA, will launch an experimental four-armed robot to grasp a defunct satellite into its clutches, hug the object closely, and then drag it on in a kamikaze dive into Earth's atmosphere, destroying both devices. This is scheduled to launch in 2025. The Clear Space One mission will test its robotic hugging muscle <laughs> on a mid-sized piece of junk called Vespa, which ESA's Vega launcher deposited in about 500 miles above Earth in 2013. That conical chunk of debris weighs about 220 pounds, 100 kilograms, making it a relatively light and easy target to capture on the robot's mission. So, I guess we'll find out. You know, that's a really good life lesson. If you ever wanna get solve a problem, you just hug people. It works, every time. NASA hopes to use AI technologies such as machine learning to interpret data that could be collected by future telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope. I don't know why I did that, but I love this telescope. Or the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, the TESS mission. NASA has partnered with companies such as Intel, IBM, and Google to develop advanced machine learning techniques. Every summer, NASA also brings technology and space innovators together for an eight-week program called the Frontier Development Lab, the FDL. Guys, this is like summer camp, but for space nerds. Where can I sign up? NASA collects approximately two gigabytes of data every 15 seconds from its fleet of spacecrafts. However, because of the limited people and time and resources, they can only analyze a fraction of that data. And that is why they need to utilize these tools more. 
In addition, researchers suggest building AI technologies into future spacecrafts. This would allow the spacecraft to make real-time science decisions and, in turn, save time that would otherwise be needed for the spacecraft to communicate with scientists on Earth. Giada Arni, a astrobiologist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, said, quote, AI methods will help us free up processing power from our own brains by doing a lot of the initial legwork on difficult tasks. But these methods won't replace humans anytime soon because we still need to check the results. Oh, mm-hmm, sure. They're just waiting to take over the world. I have seen the Will Smith movie involving AI. I don't remember what it's called right now. I know how it ends. This week's student researcher was Joey. He actually was a student researcher a little bit ago. He's amazing and um, thank you, Joey. Hey, it is me. I look a little bit different than I did five seconds ago, but here's the thing. I totally forgot to include the fact that the Back to Space Student Ambassadors have put together a phenomenal gift guide for the holidays. So please go ahead and check that out and it's a fantastic gift for everybody who likes space. So check it out. Okay, back to me. Thanks guys so much for tuning in to the Back to Space News Flash. I'll see you guys next month. Monday. <sighs> Thanks everyone so much for watching. Again, I know you want that mission patch because I do, and it's cool. And Charlie Duke wears it. To be clear, it's not going to be the same one, but it's still dang cool. So if you want to do it, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment. All right, y'all. See you guys next week. <laughs>